Little butt, big butt, little butt, big butt, little butt. Little butt, little butt. Trapped in a collapsing. Huh? Yeah, give me one one minute, I'm working. Me into Nelly. What does the loser do? Simple, really. It's just, just the way it is. Wow. Uh, judged quickly. Okay. I go faster than him. In a heart racing scene, Aiden Poole revs up their engine, hurls forward, attempting to outpace Kimmy and Nelly in their high stakes race. The finish racer. It's the wrong Kimmy. Fuck. With hair raising maneuvers and neck to neck competition, Aiden Pull narrowly manages to cross the finish line first, just as blowing dust hits. Bah, bah, bah. Kimmy Antonelli's car explodes. It's the wrong fucking Kimmy. This is the car, this is the track, and this is me trying to hit the apex of turn one. Almost got it. Almost got it. First race of the day, a car at the front just wanted to shout out this Chad Council livery. I don't know what that is. I've never seen it before, but we are starting P5 uh, as car number four with a 36.1. Not a bad time, but the guy at the front is absolutely hauling ass. And I know I said my starts were going to get better, but you're going to have to forgive me because this is the worst one that I have ever had. So we, we are falling way down the order, sliding all of the way back to I'm not even sure what position, somewhere around P14 or 13. And when that type of thing happens to me, it's kind of like a reality check or, or not a reality check, but I typically tend to sit back after that, at least for a few corners. I don't want to make any ambitious moves right off the bat. That was totally my fault. I put myself in this situation. I'm going to deal with it, and uh, I'm not going to ruin the races of anybody around me. So taking it a bit slow for the next few corners, settling behind car number 19 in P13 as we come up to, I think this is corner like six or seven, downhill, sweeping right-hander, very interesting corner. Have to be super light on the brakes and uh, get on the throttle, try and hug that AP as much as you can and like I said I'm not gonna go for any super ambitious moves so although we do take a peek there we settle back up ahead car number six who I think is in p5 looking up the inside of this green guy not gonna end well for him green guy kind of cuts across uh, they make contact that was kind of sticking your nose where it doesn't really belong and car number 19 is gonna get held up behind him so we look to go around the outside of car number six gaining a position from a uh, car number 19 there who got stuck behind him and then ahead of us this guy uh, car number 13 I guess rejoins the track and just doesn't want to use all of the track for whatever reason runs into car number six takes him out car number 18 gets I mean there was nothing he could do there 13 just rolled backwards across the track he's gonna get what he deserves though and his car is toast so he's into the pits meanwhile we have moved up into p10 gaining three positions from that corner great place to be at this point you can see the the standings update as we come around this final corner and uh 0.7 seconds ahead 0.7 seconds behind i feel like i have decent enough pace to uh, move forward from here so i'm not too worried about my position at the moment looks like the car two cars ahead going wide the car directly ahead following his line that will allow us to catch up to them uh, by quite a large margin, gaining about half of a second to both of them as we start lap number two. And about halfway through lap number two, we're going to be right on the tail of this guy. The car behind is about a second and a half behind, so not really any pressure there at the moment. Looking to open up this corner for ourselves, get a better run out of here. He's gonna open up the inside as you do for this corner. We stick our nose up the inside, and I mean, just barely, barely finding the space there. And I'm not going to lie, it was a bit of an unnecessary, unnecessarily aggressive move for a lap two. This green guy was off on the side, so we actually picked up a position from him. This is what happened to him. Super easy to do on this corner. Uh, very, very easy to lose the car through there. You have to brake extremely lightly. So we come through there trying to go side by side with uh, car number eight, but it's, on, it's, it's not really going to work out for us. We don't get as good of an exit as him, so he moves back ahead of us. He brakes about 20 meters too early, catches me off guard, and we do get a four times for contact from that but no damage to either car so we both carry on a-ok -okay. and you might notice that the car in p7 two cars ahead has begun to pull away a little bit at this point because of that fighting that i had induced however p7 is going to go super deep into turn one he manages to keep it on or actually he doesn't keep it on track but he rejoins the track just in time to uh, be right in the battle with us, or maybe just slightly too late as we go side by side with them, heading towards the carousel, super cambered corner. I don't know if it's quite a carousel. We're gonna pick up that 
position and uh, move up into P8 now, directly on the tail of car number seven. And it looks like Marcin is significantly down on speed. That will move us up into P7. And we're going to take a look back at what happened to Marcin. He's a very fast driver, but he does seem to get into a lot of accidents. This one really self-induced and nobody else around. Very easy to slide out uh, through that cambered corner. And that puts him down from P3 to, I think, P9 or 10. So here is us getting that position, moving up into P7, still having some pressure onto Eduardo, two tenths behind him. And as we come through the sweeping downhill right hander or the entry to it, he gets a tire in the dirt and good by sliding off to the side so back up into p6 and we're making some pretty decent progress car number 15 has caught up to us as we kind of had a bit of a battle over the last lap or so but we do have a bit of clean air ahead of us now so i'm not too worried about pulling pulling a gap here marcim is right behind him that's kind of on my radar my marcim is a very fast driver and uh, he's also a pretty aggressive driver he will make a move if there is any space available so i want to try and get away as quickly as i can fortunately i do have jason in between marcim and myself so hopefully he can hold him back for a little bit and here we are lap number four Marcin looking to get past Jason as quickly as possible diving up the inside going to carry a little bit too much speed and asking for too much grip from the car there it's going to end in a slide for him once again so he will fall back and that will relieve a bit of pressure as he was fighting with Jason or at least he dove up the inside which slows Jason down a second behind p5 so we're looking at getting back into the top five and uh, the podium isn't too far away, about three seconds away. We've got three cars to go through to get there, but it's definitely possible. It's only lap four, 17 lap race, so a ton of time. We're only about a quarter of the way through this race. Not, actually, not even a quarter of the way through, but we are going to skip ahead to lap number seven as it did take me quite a bit of time to catch up to Stefano here. Finally, we have him at about three tenths as we come around the first corner. Uh, P3 is still about two and a half seconds up the road, so we're not making super quick progress to him. However, P4 is not that far within a second to us, and uh, that's kind of my aim right now, is looking past P5 at P4. I'll worry about P5 once I get to him, which will be lap number 10 as we cross the line and we are right up behind him. He's gonna move to a defensive line before I can move to an offensive one, so I am going to be looking around the outside. I actually, don't send it nearly as hard as I could have there. Kind of back out and settle behind him. 0.1 seconds behind him now. If you don't get that move done cleanly, it's very easy to lose a ton of time. And uh, we're going to go high. He goes very shallow, trying to get some sort of switch back on him. We definitely have the run, but he still has track position, and I don't want to risk dying. We've already climbed, climbed so high from so far back that I'm going to play it slightly safe. Settle back, break slightly early into turn number seven. He does go deep, though, completely missing the apex. Not quite going to be an overtaking opportunity, but as long as we can kind of keep a gap around two to three tenths by the time we reach the end of this lap, we should be okay to make a move into turn one. And here we are coming around the final corner. We've got him two tenths ahead of us, using the camber to our advantage. He rides a bit too high on that exit, which you actually lose a bit of speed. On to lap number 11, turn one. And we're actually not even going to have, a, have to make a move here as he locks up his tires into turn one and drives off of the track. So we are promoted into a top five position. We have P4 a second up the road. P3 must have made some sort of mistake as he is now below two seconds ahead of us. So we have an opportunity here for a podium. Just need to put in some solid laps as we have a little bit of clean air here. Cleaner air than we've had for the past few laps. And behind us, it looks like Thomas, who is Marcin's teammate, has ended up in the wall. And it's hard to describe how easy it is to make this mistake. Coming out of that super cambered corner, if you have the wheel turned, like, really at all while applying throttle when the car goes light over that crest, super, super easy to lose the car. I've seen like 7k drivers make that mistake so by the time lap number 12 comes around turn one it looks like Jan has completely missed the apex of turn one we managed to hit it pretty well that time we're three tenths behind him and my real focus in terms of overtaking is pretty much just corner one you can also make an overtake into corner nine it's like the very long left hander it's slightly off camber I'll point it out when we get there and skipping ahead to it well here it is. This is corner number nine. So if you get a good enough run and you're close enough, you can definitely make a move here. Honestly, sometimes you can make it into corner number 10. It's a pretty risky move, but 10 is this kind of chicane that we're heading into right here. Not nearly close enough to make a move in this instance. It would have to be an all mighty dive bomb from that far back. And I'm not willing to risk my life or Jan's for that. So through the chicane, we have him at a decent gap heading towards the penultimate corner and as I said before, corner number one is really where I'm aiming, aiming for to make an overtake, and we have a 
pretty decent run out of that penultimate corner, heading around the final one, trying to use the camber to our advantage. Don't want to ride the car too high, and you can see Jan is doing the same thing. He knows how to work it. One tenth behind, heading towards turn one, looking for an offensive line, but Jan moves to a semi-defensive one at the exact same time. I pull back to the outside, and a little bit too late on the brakes there. I was still kind of moving my car around, a little bit of oversteer, and we end up falling off of him by around four tenths, which is a decently significant gap. We really need to get that to about one or two by the time we cross the uh, the, lot, the starting line here. Lap number 15, we have them at three tenths. It's, uh, it would be a dive to try and make a move here. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay behind him and hopefully look for one on the next lap, which would be the penultimate lap. 17 laps total. This is lap number 15. So this is the like the pre-penultimate, the penultimate, penultimate lap. And uh, we found ourselves in a really good place. One second behind Ibai on uh, in, in P3. I'm not sure if that's how you say his name, but my my focus is pretty much just on Jan at the moment, looking for a P4 position, which is better than P5, so I would be happy with it. Jan is defending into corner number nine. Don't know if it was totally necessary there. Still gets a really good run out uh, for how narrow of a line he took through there. The little chicane, and all we have to do here is stay within about three tenths of him. We managed to do it. Penultimate corner, same thing. It's, it's really, I just... I just see these as accessories to the final corner because you don't need to have the best run out of there. You will have the slipstream, and that's kind of what I was aiming for here. You can see just how quickly we're pulling up on him. He's going to defend the inside. We pull to the outside, and it looks like we're going to be alongside. We may even be slightly ahead heading into turn one of the penultimate lap. He breaks later than us, though, which means there's going to be some space open, and there we are executing a switchback side by side, heading through turn number two. Kind of difficult to make this one work side by side, honestly. Have to allow each other plenty of space into corner number three i know he's going to end up going deep here as he goes very low i'm going underneath him for a switchback and i freaking i mean the switchback was beautiful i don't know why i just continued to open up my steering i knew he was there and i drove directly into him it was very small contact initially but i mean it's it was it was it set I, I basically set myself up for the perfect pit maneuver great racing by Jan I just pulled too far out wide there and by the time the final lap comes around as we rejoin the track we have slight steering damage Marcim is now behind us on the final lap this is like my nightmare I hate being in this position I am in P8 currently however Marcim will make a dive 100%. I don't know why I decided not to defend this. I should have defended this. I end up having to overbreak and just hang out wide as he sends it through, cuts the track, but gets the position. So props to him. I mean, he made the move work. He got the car stopped. Here is his, his view of that, which I mean, super close to getting a slowdown there for sure. But he manages to keep it not on track, but within, uh, within outside of a slowdown. So we cross the line in P9. And yeah, disappointed, disappointing end to that race. What was looking like a really good recovery race just all went wrong. Uh, no one's fault but my own there. Here are the results, finishing in P9, trying to forget what could have been and uh, just being happy with what is, what was, losing a bit of I rating and gaining a little bit of safety rating. However, it's pretty minute changes overall. So uh, yeah, we just kind of stayed the same place, honestly. Next race, same guy on pole. We are in the same position as well, starting in P5 as car number four again with damn near the exact same qualifying time. We have Joey ahead of us, who is, uh, Joey had some mad, mad pace in uh, on Zanford. So Joey is starting in P3. And look at this. Look at this. I was so proud of this. I didn't lose a position heading into turn one. It is such a good feeling. Apparently, they have changed the race starts for this upcoming season in this car, so I shouldn't have these uh, these problems as much. Behind me, heading through corner number two, car number six, and the blue car, car number five, going side by side. Six slowing down, looking for a switchback. Everybody is going to actually make it through here just about almost everybody uh flashing back to lap number one car number 24 starting in p24 hitting the wall hitting that car hitting the wall again and somebody who's made contact three times before turn one is somebody who is not to be trusted here he goes locking up his brakes sending it from about half of a second back taking out car number 16 then driving into him 
And, I mean, there, there could have been some sort of avoidance there. He does end up in the wall facing the wrong way, so Justice was semi-served. Unfortunately, there's somebody else in the wall as well, car number 23 there. But uh, this won't be the last we see of car number 24, so we'll tune back into him later. Meanwhile, we are heading towards turn 6. This is actually turn 6. I think I called it turn 7. Uh, this is turn 6, the downhill right-hander. Still in P5. We've dropped off of P4 a little bit. We have about almost a full second to him, almost a full second to the car behind as well. So we're on a bit of an island, which is a pretty good place to be for lap one. It allows you to heat up your tires and take your lines on your own time. And behind us, crossing onto lap number two, the fight for P7 is going crazy. 11 with a beautiful run, looking up the inside of car number six, who doesn't want that to happen. So he's going to send it a bit deep. Car on the outside realizes it, gives space, and we're going to hop on board with car number 11 as he watches six and 14 barrel through corner number two side by side. And heading into corner number three, this looks like it could be chaos a car number 11 just turns in there not quite sure that's not really the racing line but he does end up dying for it actually just about makes it back onto track facing the right direction and then slides out uh exiting that camber corner so quite a fall from grace for him and that actually opens up the gap from p6 to p7 massively and i see p6 in my rear view just digging underground and flying up in the air disappearing all types of different things trying to ignore that we are still about seven tenths behind thomas ahead which is slipstream range so if we can keep this potentially make up a tenth or two by the time we come around that final corner we should be able to catch him a decent amount you can see the top three beginning to pull away joey being the car sitting in p3 so he's on the podium at the moment but that is about to change as he comes through a corner i think that's corner eight or that's corner seven this is corner eight and uh, heading into corner nine which we've covered quite a bit already in this video it's as i said super easy even for top drivers to spin here and joey is going to fall victim to that just carrying slightly too much speed in perhaps a little bit too heavy on the brakes sliding out promoting us up into p4 and promoting thomas to a podium position which is going to open up an opportunity for us as i do believe we had pace over thomas we also have the slipstream which should be an advantage for us so p3 is definitely on the table however joey did rejoin the track about four seconds behind he was much faster than us so i know that at the same time that we're going to be attacking Thomas, we are going to be running away from Joey, and by the next lap, Joey has already closed that gap by about two tenths, so I expect unless he wrecks again, he will catch us slash pass us. One of those things, or both of those things, will happen. Right up on the tail of Thomas, we have met about two tenths as we head through the chicane. Want to keep that gap as low as we can, look for a good exit out of here. Not really the one we wanted, but his was definitely not the one he wanted as he did look like he got a bit loose through there, through the penultimate corner. Decent enough run to maintain speed. We're going to have the slipstream. Use the camber. Use the camber. Use the camber. Do not ride up super high. And I ended up riding up super high anyway, but we do have the slipstream, so it could have been worse. Two tenths behind as we cross onto lap number five. Taking a peek up the inside. Not really going to look for it. Trying to get in Thomas's head a little bit. And, uh... I don't know if that really did anything, but his line definitely could have been better. I, my line was not great, and I maintained the same gap to him. So hoping, I'm just going to say that that did something to his head. And sometimes when you're the car behind, it's like, it, it's useful to not even take the best lines, but just take ones that will get into the head of the car behind or in front of you, which is kind of what we're trying to do here. We're turning in a little bit early, just showing in his mirrors, trying to create some sort of, uh, of pressure in his head and uh, on track towards him, which if you're not going to actually make a move, you know, con consistently applying pressure is a long move, but it's still a move. We end up asking way too much of the car in terms of angle and speed at the same time there. A little bit of oversteer coming out of there. We will drop off of Thomas a bit, but uh, we are still attached via the slipstream. Lap number seven comes around and car number two, who is in P2, sliding out through the first corner. It's, it, it's hard. I mean, I've said this about other corners but this whole track is like any corner can sneak up on you it's very easy to lose the car when you are driving on the limit on this track which especially these top guys man they were hauling ass and you can see that in their lap times they're setting 35s i'm setting a 36 2 at the moment so definitely not driving as risky or uh, as close to the limit and i think that's uh, in large part because i never really found it on this track Car number two sliding out did promote us into P3, so we are now on the podium. Thomas going extremely deep on the exit of corner number nine. That's going to put us right on his tail. Not going to make a move here, but possibly looking for something 
towards the first corner. However, Thomas is defending just in case we do look to make a move here. Wasn't going to, perhaps I should have. I didn't really ever make a move there this week. I uh, much preferred to just battle it through corner number one, but now that I think about it, you know, going through there could have gotten you that position a lot earlier, and then defending through corner number one is much easier than attacking Thomas into the dirt through the penultimate corner, and as we head around the final one, we're side by side. We have the inside for corner number one, and we're going to hold that inside pretty tightly. Thomas moves behind us to soak up that slipstream, crossing onto lap number eight. We're in P2, trying to defend P2 from Thomas here. He's going to look to go around the outside. We slow down a bit early, take an extremely tight line, giving Thomas as much room as we possibly can, riding all over that inside curve, all over the outside one. Thomas gets a better exit than us, which will put him side by side through corner number two, hopping on board with P4 as he watches the battle for P2. I have to take a narrow line on the inside through corner number three, opens up the switchback for Thomas, and he executes it damn near perfectly side by side, heading towards corner number six, and very difficult to make this corner work. It's not going to. It's not going to work side by side. Here's Thomas's view. You guys can make up your own thoughts about this. I have a specific thought on this and why this happened. And uh, that thought is, I mean, here's my cockpit. First of all, uh, I actually didn't even get any force feedback or anything from that contact. My problem is that he is way too far away from me heading into the left-hander where we open up for corner number six. And that tends to make lines clash, which ends up happening here and he is into the wall. Uh, I, I would classify that as racing incident. This is Joey's POV. Thomas rejoining the track. Joey looking to take advantage of the inside of car number two who has, who has rejoined in front of Joey, but uh, not going to. Everybody does survive there, which is great. I'm up into P2. Car number five is now challenging for P2. He is sitting on the podium. And Juan Gomez and Joey, who were P2 and P3 respectively earlier on in this race, are behind Charles. There's what, eight laps left of this race, nine laps left. They're two and a half seconds behind me, and they're consistently about three to four tenths faster per, per lap. So they definitely should catch me if my math is right in about six laps, unless I turn on the heat, make no mistakes, keep Charles behind me, preferably lose Charles. Maybe Charles could slow down Juan and Joey behind possibility of it. I get way too caught up in my thoughts at this point, not as focused on the road, end up taking way too much of that inside, go all the way into the dirt for corner number six, lose the car a bit, manage to keep it on track, actually not lose any time there. So tragedy avoided, but uh, definitely could have been the end of my race there. We've seen people slide out there this video once they get a tire into the dirt for the braking zone, but we managed to keep it on track. Lap number 10, so the very next lap into turn one and it's just, the mistakes are just flowing right now. Once you make one, you tend to make another one. I slide through corner number one, keep it on track, but I am now side by side with Charles. If uh, not a position, this is definitely going to be some time lost. We have the inside for corner number three, opening it up as much as we can for ourselves, trying to stay, keep track position. And we just are able to, as uh, I don't believe he, we were side by side really there. He kind of runs into the back of our bumper, but uh, nobody is damaged. Nobody is hurt. Everybody is still on track. So maintaining P2, losing a bit of time, absolutely. We now have Juan and Joey much closer behind us, which puts uh, Charles here in quite a predicament as he has Juan directly behind him now. That fighting caught him right up to the back of his car. So as well as looking for a move on me, he's going to have to be defending Juan, which I think is a more pressing issue. I think uh, Juan is faster than Charles than Charles is faster than me that makes sense. So I should be able to pull away here. Juan is all over the butt of Charles, right up his bumper, and Joey is not far behind. So he's about to come under some heavy fire. And I just need to open up the gap between myself and Charles as much as I possibly can before Juan makes that move work for himself. I'm hoping that it can take maybe a lap or two. If honestly, if Charles could just defend turn one successfully one time, I think it would be enough room for me to break the slipstream from Juan, which should prolong Juan catching me. And uh, lap number 11, the next lap, Charles is not even going to fight it. He's going to stay on the outside, let Juan go up the inside, and that move is going to be done pretty clinically. Charles then blinks out of existence as soon as Joey comes up behind him, so Joey is not going to be able to get that move done. One of them has been let through. Um, I guess it's better than both of them going through, but I would have obviously much preferred for Juan to get held back a little bit there. And he's about he's about half of a second behind me as we go through corner number three, which is going to mean that he's in the slipstream. Lap number 11, we have six laps left after this one, and holding this guy behind me for six laps is going to be quite the challenge, one that I don't think I was truly willing to take, if I'm being honest. 
So in my head at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to run from him for as long as I can, but once he looks to make a move, I'm just going to let that shit go. Joey is trying to follow through as quickly as he can. Charles already falling off of Juan by a couple of tenths, and Joey is right on his tail looking to go up the inside of corner number nine. He's going to find the space mid corner. They go side by side. However, car number five is going to have a good exit. Joey also makes a little bit of contact there, and he's going to end up sliding behind, so actually some time lost as opposed to a possible position gain for him. Lap number 12, we still have Juan behind us, albeit he is literally up our exhaust pipe. Joey is going to look to make a move once again on Charles, as it is pretty clear that he is losing time to the podium and possibly losing the possibility of getting a podium. A lot of possibles there and uh, not possibles. A deep run through corner number eight puts car number five on the inside for corner number nine. Joey forced to take an outside or perhaps just a deep line and cut back for a good exit. However, car number five just spins on his own, trying to uh, keep too tight of an angle there and build the throttle too early. So now I have Juan and Joey behind me. The guys who started this race in P2 and P3 now looking to get their starting positions back. And uh, it would have to be a hyper defensive race from me because I know that I do not have the pace for these guys. They were setting 35s consistently with clean air. With clean air, I think I was setting like 36, low 36s, the occasional 35, but I was definitely not consistent and I was making a few mistakes. Juan, it seems like he's pretty far back at this point and it may be just enough done by us in the last sector of that last lap to keep him behind. And you can actually see that we cut in a bit early uh, just to dissuade any possibility of a dive, which I don't think he was ever going to make, but it's, it's what pressure does to you when there is somebody faster behind. You tend to kind of turn in earlier than you normally would, and then it ends up messing up your exit, which is basically what happened there. We have Juan 0.2 seconds behind us as we come out of corner number three. Uh, P1 is 13 seconds up the road, so there is no chance of that. Coming towards the chicane at the end of this lap, and Juan is still right behind us, literally just waiting to make a move. I'm sure he's slowing down for us at multiple points and he is exactly where he needs to be to make an overtake on the uh, starting grid the starting straight into turn number one on this next lap I try and send it in as quickly as I can break as little as I can all I end up doing is messing up my exit Juan gets a better exit gets the slipstream and he's going to move to the inside not going to fight that. Uh, pretty similar to what he did to Charles here as I just stay on the outside. I'm actually going to try and back out earlier though so I can tuck into his slipstream. And Joey at this point is now four tenths behind us. So I had been slowing down Juan last lap and Joey had been catching both of us. Lap number 15. We still have two laps to go. Joey is directly on my tail. I'm falling off of Juan. Similar situation here. If Joey goes for a move, I'm not going to fight it. Joey has a possibility of fighting for P2 and that move is going to kind of open itself up here as I make a mistake going through corner number eight stay wide let joey go through on corner number nine and it may have been too late already as joey is about a second behind juan and their pace was pretty similar to each other so probably not enough slipstream to catch there final lap sure enough they had both pulled away from me i just didn't have the pace and you'll see joey's joey kind of falling back on the relative here as uh we were on comms and he decided to be very nice because he had been dominating all week see him to give it a little wiggle there as he slows down i did not want to accept this I, I i'm not a fan of getting positions in this way he slows down pulls to the inside of the final corner and i actually try and slow down as well to tell him to go and we're kind of yapping back and forth on the mic telling each other to go and then joey says somebody better go now because there's a guy catching us so i take it not the way i want to get a podium but it's what happened in this race so crossing the line in really p4 it says p3 but Obviously, that's a P4 finish for us. Joey is the true P3 as car number three. Shout out to Joey uh, just for being the GOAT. Now, skipping back to that incident at lap one, I said we were going to take a closer look at this car number 24. Before we do that, we're going to take a look at car number 16, who, and this is exactly what I tried to avoid. Whenever you make a mistake on the first lap, you tend to want to just absolutely ship it and make up for that mistake as quickly as you can. He does that exact thing a couple of corners later really ambitious move possibly just missing his braking marker but he goes sliding off to the side uh, and he rejoins the track right behind car number 24 who is the guy who murdered him into turn one so i su suspect that he was nervous about passing this guy fortunately car number 24 is going to lock up his brakes for a second time on the first lap into corner number eight and i'm going to highlight a bit of this guy's race you can call it low light but he is car number 24 which means he is the last the, the lowest rated player in this lobby and I mean, it showed through his driving. A lot of times the guys at the bottom are actually like 
weirdly fast. Like, I'll see 2K drivers that are just really fast. But this guy was locking up into every corner. Like, I don't know if there's a corner that he did not lock up into. And I, I was like, maybe his, he, his steering is broken, but it looks fine. Maybe he had some sort of other damage. I'm not quite sure. But he was consistently, like, locking up and, uh, in some cases, just spinning out on exit. And... I mean, perseverance is one thing. Like, he definitely he went through this race all of the way to the end. He actually finished this race. Somehow, he didn't even get a drive through. But um, at some point, you have to realize that you probably did not practice enough, or maybe you're practicing wrong. Like, there must be something going on. I don't. Maybe he's driving on a controller. Honestly, this looks like this looks like how I drove the Porsche Cup when I tried it on controller. However. I did not ever enter a race on controller. I did a practice session, realized that uh, this car is damn near impossible to drive on controller, and I did not touch it again until all of my sim gear arrived. And I assume that that's what's happening here. Either way, he honestly did really good at staying out of people's way, so shout out for that. Taking a look at the results there, and let me, uh, there we go. Yeah, fix that for you. Joey finishing in P3, um, finishing in P4. Joey is at 5K I rating, by the way. Huge shout out uh, to that. That is a huge milestone. We are green and red. Don't really care about safety rating all that much, to be honest with you. If you guys enjoyed this video, please check out my channel and some of my other videos. That is the best way to support me, and I will see you next time.